Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll talk about the four different types of API you can build for your LLM application. The first two are going to be variations of a, a classic HTTP API. One's going to be synchronous, so blocking. The other will be asynchronous. And then we're going to take a look at the more functional APIs for these kind of applications that uses either HTTP stream or WebSocket. So let's start with the first one, which is going to be the blocking API or the synchronous API. That's going to be very simple. Let's say you have an endpoint or an API route uh, called slash question, and the user can pass in the prompt in that, uh, in that route. When they do that, the backend server forwards the prompt to the, uh, to the OpenAI server. Let's say we wait 15, 20 seconds, depending on the complexity of the prompt. After that, the server forwards the response from the from OpenAI back to the client. So you can see an example here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, you can see an example here where the client is sending hello world and OpenAI is sending hi there back to the client through your server. So the biggest problem with this approach is the client does not get a response until OpenAI processes the full prompt, right? So let's say if you have a very complicated prompt and it takes 10 to 15 seconds for OpenAI or any other LLM to form the complete response, then the client is waiting for those 15, 20 seconds. Maybe they see a loading spinner or just like a prompt that says loading. But the client cannot see the first couple of lines immediately uh, like you typically see when you're using ChatGPT, Claude, or any of those apps. So even though this kind of an API works very well in cases where you can immediately send the response, uh, sorry, send the response back to the client, uh, but most likely in cases where the prompt is uh, much more complicated, it will not work. So now let's build on this and then come up with a little bit of a better implementation, which is going to be our asynchronous API. So in this one, again, we have a very similar looking route called slash question, which takes in a user prompt. Let's say the client sends a prompt to the backend server, and then uh, we forward that to OpenAI. So now in this design, instead of waiting for OpenAI to finish the response, or finish forming the response, we immediately send back a URL to the client. So we get the request from the client, we forward it to OpenAI, and while OpenAI is processing the response, we immediately send a polling URL to the client and uh, HTTP 202 status code. So what does this polling URL have, right? So this is going to be like a typical HTTP GET route that you build in your backend server. And let's say it takes in a task ID, right? So whenever in this first step, the backend forwards the response to OpenAI, it tags that prompt uh, with that task ID, right? And then it sends back to the client that task ID and the full polling URL. So what the client can do in this third step over here, every couple of seconds, it can use that polling URL, fill in the task ID, and then ask our backend server uh, something like, hey, is the response to this task ready or not? So the response when the task uh, has been completed would be something like this, where we give it the status, the original prompt, and the answer. So even though this is not a significant improvement over the first, over the first design, it still gives the user a lot more feedback because now the user can uh, do other things while the uh, while the processing is happening in the background, right? So we're not blocking, uh, we're not blocking like we were in this API. Instead, we are setting the expectation immediately and telling the client, "Hey, this is going to take a little bit of a time, so you can do other things and keep checking for our response, and we're going to give it to you whenever it's available." So totally depending on your application, you can build your client to pull for a response every couple of seconds, every 10 seconds, uh, every second. That totally depends on your app. Okay, so both of these uses the 
typical HTTP APIs that you're used to. Now the next two that we're gonna take a look at are gonna be HTTP stream and WebSocket. So both of these are gonna be a lot more realistic to use for any LLM application. So let's start with the first one, which is the HTTP stream, okay? So uh, for HTTP stream, the cool thing is once the client sends the request to the backend, instead of the backend sending only one response back, it can send its response in chunks, right? So let's say your prompt, uh, hello world, has uh, three lines of response, right? Now, in your previous implementation, we needed OpenAI to send us all three lines of response before we can send that back to the client. But using stream, what you can do is uh, you can tell OpenAI to send the response in chunk to your server and you can forward that back to the client incrementally. Okay, so you don't need to wait for the full response. So if you remember in the first case, we're assuming that the prompt is complicated enough where it takes 15 seconds for OpenAI to form uh, its complete response. In the HTTP stream approach, we don't have to wait that long. So even if it does take OpenAI 15 seconds to process, we can start sending data back to the client as soon as like one second or two seconds. Okay, so an example, if we go, go through this diagram here, it's gonna be, we get the request, we send it to OpenAI, then immediately within like a second or two, OpenAI sends us the first bits of the response. So for hello world, it just says hi, right? And we forward it to the client. Maybe a couple of seconds later, OpenAI sends us there and we forward it to the client. And at this point, the client is saying hi there. Similarly, we keep going, maybe a couple of seconds later, it sends us how are. So now we have hi there, how are, and finally you. So we have the full response, uh, full response, which is hi there, how are you? But instead of waiting 15 seconds to display to the user, we were showing the data to them in chunks, which is significantly better. The one thing, HTTP stream does not give us is the, the chunking ability both ways, right? Or the communication both ways. So in this case, as you saw, the server could almost push the data to the client, but the client cannot keep pushing data to the server. So once the client fires this get request here, even though it is getting the response in chunks, until it finishes getting the full response, it cannot just start sending another request to the server. So it almost limits that, uh, that uh, chunking way of responding to only the server. The client cannot do that. So you can imagine um, at this point, let's say when, uh, when, the, uh, when the server sent there and we have hi there, let's say the client decides to interrupt the server, right? And says, hey, no, that's not what I was asking. I was actually asking this. In a case like that, the client cannot do that until OpenAI and your backend server complete sending the full response. So it needs to send, hi there, how are you? And only after that can the client ask its second question. So now let's improve that, right? Which is gonna be in our final design where we're gonna use WebSocket. So using WebSocket, it gives you full control over the application the the server can keep pushing data to the client whenever it needs to similarly the client can interrupt the server at any point and uh, just ask a new question so if you go through this example uh, it's going to be very similar to the last one let's say the prompt is hello world and now OpenAI sends back hi there and then how are why and let's say before it can even complete by saying how are you uh, the client has a new question, right? So in this case, the client just wants to exit out of the app. So it says, gotta go by. Now, instead of, so what happens here, right? So when, when the client says, gotta go by, the client doesn't need to wait for the first response to finish, right? So instead of that, the moment the client sends them this message, OpenAI gets that and immediately it starts responding to that new uh, to that new prompt that 
the client said. So in this case, sorry to see, you leave so soon, okay? So that's what you get with WebSocket. It's super powerful because you can interrupt each other at any time. And for applications like uh, ChatGPT or any similar application that uses LLM, WebSocket is definitely gonna be the way to go. The only problem is it's always a lot more complicated to design something that uses WebSocket as opposed to HTTP stream. So if your current architecture uses HTTP stream, uh, building the application using HTTP stream is going to be a much incremental uh, change to your implementation than just switching to WebSocket altogether. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this was helpful. I will attach the notes and the code in the description below. So if you want to go read through it, there's a lot more details there. Feel free to do so. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And I will talk to you all in the next one.